Hi, my name is Rudy Valsabas, and today I'll be going over the fixed asset module in Dynamics 365 Business Central. So the agenda of today is first I'll be going over how to set up fixed assets. So I'll go over, I'll briefly go over the fixed asset setup windows to get to get started with this module. And then I'll do a demo of how to add new assets and how to process monthly depreciation. So this is my demo environment. So to, in order to set up fixed assets, you would just search the setup window, which is fixed asset setup. If you're coming from GP, you're probably used to seeing uh, multiple windows that you have to go into to set up fixed assets. Whereas in Business Central, it's, it's a little more simple in terms of how to set it up. It's all in this fixed asset setup section. Um, and then these various tabs that which I'll go over. So what you see here first is your default book. So you can have multiple books, for example, a tax book or another book where you keep track of, track, of, track of assets a different way, but you'll always have to have one default book which will be uh, connected to your GL. So in this example, it's my company book here. And then fixed asset numbering sequences here. Uh, so this just means that the asset, what the asset IDs will, will be named. So for example, the first asset that you add will be FA0001 and 002 and so on. So you can edit this um, depending on your company preference there. If you click the general tab, you'll see the FA class, subclass and location setup. So FA classes, so what, what we normally see with, the, with FA classes is a distinction of intangible or tangible. You can also have financial here as well. But this, again, it depends on how you want to set up fixed assets and your classes. If you go to subclasses, this is what you're probably used to seeing, your various uh, subclasses. So equipment, furniture, and so on. And as you can see, they're always part of either tangible or intangible FA class code. If you click depreciation, so this is where you would define your depreciation book. Um, so uh, yeah, so this is de by default, for example, so company is a default one connected to your GL. Um, there's one setting here I wanted to go over, fiscal 365 days. So if you have this turned off, it will assume that your calendar year for your fixed assets is 360 days meaning all your depreciation every month will be the same uh, for that particular asset. If you turn this on, it will it will calculate depreciation based on days. Okay, and if you scroll down a bit here, so the integration piece, this is just um, uh, saying that this, this book is connected to the GL. So if you had multiple other books, such as a tax book or other books, these settings will be off because you can only, only have one connected to your GL. And then also reporting, if you do, if you uh, acquire fixed assets in different currencies or deal with different currencies in some way with fixed assets, you would have to um, configure this section here. Okay, I'll just go back to my fixed asset setup window again. The next section is posting. So posting groups, this is uh, probably a window that you might uh, be familiar with, is how uh, each of your asset classes will be integrated to your GL, uh, which GL um, accounts will be will get posted depending on the transaction. So typically the ones that need to have at least uh, a GL account on them is your acquisition cost account, um, which is a balance sheet account, so your purchase account, um, your accumulated depreciation account, so this would be in the balance sheet account as well, your gain and loss accounts, and then if you scroll all the way to the right, your depreciation expense account. Okay, so once that's all set up, you're good to go with using fixed assets and, and adding and running depreciation. Okay, so I'll just go over an example, a demo of how to add a new fixed asset. So if you go into fixed asset or just search it up, fixed assets here, this will actually show you all the fixed assets that are currently in your system. So in my demo environment, I only have four existing assets here. So if you wanted to add a new one, you just click new. Okay, and then the description. So I'll just say office, office equipment two. 
again, this can be um, any type of description that you want here. So if uh, a specific uh, item or description of an office equipment, you can add that here. FA class code, so equipment is a tangible asset. So you click that. FA subclass code, so it is an equipment. So I'll just select that one there. And if you scroll all the way down, you can see all the required fields are always red here. So depreciation starting date. So let's just assume it's going to start July 1st. Number of years. So let's do three years. And then it automatically populates the ending date depending on how many years you put there. So once that's done, you can actually acquire the asset. So right now it's not actually uh, integrated to your GL. You don't have to go to Actions and Acquire. Click Next here. So the acquisition cost, this is what you the value of the asset. So let's say 3,600. And then acquisition date. So this is actually not uh, the date it, it starts depreciating. It's actually this date that you set here. So this you can just say, so this would be your date that you uh, purchase the asset or that it started or just arrived in the building, but ne not necessarily when it um, started service. So we can just backdate this to, let's say it was July 1st, it went into service. So let's say June 1st, we acquired the asset. Click next. So the balancing count. So typically the process would be um, when your AP AP staff purchase the asset, they'll put it into clearing. So then when you add the asset, you'll just take it out of clearing. So, uh, but depending on the process um, you have for your company, it might be different, but in this demo environment, that's what we're doing here. So when we add the asset, it takes it out of clearing and puts it into purchasing account. Click next and then finish. So with that, uh, you can have the setting make it so that you can see the actual GL journal. But in my case, in this demo environment here, I made it to automatically post to the GL. Okay, if I back out here, and if I just refresh this, actually it showed up there already, but I just wanted to refresh just to show you here. So this office equipment is now listed there and it's it's acquired. So meaning it's, it's uh, integrated to the GL. Okay, so then the next step uh, or your usual process with fixed assets is running depreciation. So if you wanted to do that, you just search it. So you can actually just search depreci depreciation and it's this calculate depreciation function. Okay, so this is again, it defaults to the last time I did depreciation. So the last time I did it was for August. So for this example, I will do it for September 2020, 2020. So end of September, and I'll just rename the batch here 0920. And I just last time I just ran it for building, but um, I'm going to run it for all the assets. OK, so I'll take this filter off. So this section here is if you wanted to just run depreciation for, say, one single asset or depending on their class code or subclass code, maybe you just want to run all intangibles, you can set it up that way. But if you leave it blank and press OK, it'll just run for all assets. OK, so now it's run for five fixed assets, which we have five here. Now it's asking me if, you, if I want to open the GL window just to see the GL effect. I'll click yes there. So now you can see all the depreciation that's being run for each asset. Okay, So each asset number there, and it's touching the depreciation expense account. Okay, So once you're ready to post this, click Process and Post. Okay, and that's good there. One thing I forgot was you could, before you ran depreciation, you can also project it. So just to get an estimate, or if you have someone that wanted was interested in seeing a projection of fixed assets, the, the expense effect on the financials, they can run projected value, fixed asset projected value. 
So this one right here, fixed asset projected value. So say I wanted to run, uh, let's keep it at company book, so because I only have one book there. If I'm interested in the depreciation values for uh, a given time period. So let's say we've already run September, so maybe we're interested in the depreciation that's going to be recorded as of October 1st up to maybe the next year. So October 1st, 2021. Okay. And then I'll leave everything default for now. And again, you can filter by asset. If I click preview here, it will now show, I'll just zoom that in. It will now show a projection of each asset, the depreciation amounts that's going to be recorded for each period. Okay. So that's a good, a good report to run before you run depreciation just to get an idea of is it what you expect for your depreciation for that month. Okay, and then last thing I wanted to show was your FA ledger entries. So this is just a summary of all the fixed asset transactions that went through. So for example, the one the depreciation that I just ran was these September depreciation amounts. It just provides a summary there. So this includes everything, but again, with Business Central, you can do a search if you're interested to do some sort of filter uh, to get the information that you need. Okay, so that concludes this video. So hopefully that gives you more information about the fixed asset module in Dynamics 365 Business Central. Thank you.